Good evening. The North Las Vegas City Council welcomes each and every one of you to a City Council meeting this evening. If you wish to speak, please complete one of the blue cards, which are located on the table outside the main entrance and also on the podium on the right and the left here. Uh, please give the card to the City Clerk. She's sitting right here. When we call upon you to speak, we request that you limit your comments no more than three minutes and that you avoid repetition. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, are we in compliance with the open meeting law? We are in compliance. Great. We're very blessed tonight to have our invocation given by Pastor Jerry, Jeremy Martin of Grace Point Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Roy Thies. Please rise. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for uh, breath in our lungs and the life that you've given us. And we thank you, especially this time of year where we are mindful of uh, your son that you sent and uh, to bring joy and hope to this world. God, I just thank you for Jesus and what he has done for all of us. God, I pray for the welfare of the city and wisdom for its leaders. And I pray that tonight's meeting would be beneficial uh, to what goes on in this city and uh, that decisions would be made well and that you would be honored here and everything is done. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Would you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate you and Grace Point Church for all they do for our wonderful community, and also to you, Roy. Thank you so much for leading us in the pledge. This is a side, the time set aside for public comment on posted agenda items. Um, we have a few cards here. When I call your name, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and please limit your comments to three minutes. This is posted agenda items. Uh, Mona Lisa Samuelson, please come forward. And followed her would be Vicki Higgins. No, no, Vicki, you want to come? No, she wants to come. Do you want to come in item four, or do you, do you want to be in the first public forum? Cause I, I believe that it said that there wasn't any there wasn't any input on those items. Yeah, it says, well, anyway, go ahead and we'll take Okay. It. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm here once again to represent for the medical marijuana community. I am a 25-year resident here in Nevada and a 15-year resident of Las Vegas. I wanted to come down and say thank you once again. I keep saying thank you, but really... You are my favorite council. Thank you so much for taking the time and the due diligence to listen to the patients and their concerns. As we go forth and things kind of get muddled through the system, there's a reason why North Las Vegas isn't experiencing some of those problems. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for that, for the patients. Because instead of just moving along and getting ourselves into trouble where we have to slow down, now we can move along with a, a sense of confidence with community building. I think that you've won us some very important people to help our community, and I want to thank you. It was good business sense that won us those people. It had nothing to do with them wanting to pay less money to come to North Las Vegas, not at all. It had something to do with the integrity of the council sitting here. So I want to thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mona Lisa. That's very nice to hear that. Ms. Higgins? Good evening, Vicki Higgins, Cannabis Advocate. I wanted to say thank you for all the assist with the application process. Your staff, your team has been absolutely amazing. Our team is in front of you this evening, and I would like to offer support to every team in front of you this evening. We've all worked very hard, and we look forward to working in Las Vegas and working with you. Thanks. Thank you, Vicki. At this time, we will uh, close that portion of the public hearing. We're going to have a presentation by the City Council to recognize recognize the employer first and then the team for the fourth quarter. Council, would you please join me down front for the presentation? I am privileged to recognize the employee of the fourth quarter, 
Johanna Murphy, will you please come forward? Johanna, principal planner for the city, is the employee of the fourth quarter. She has been nominated for her quality and professional service she provides to the Travel Channel during the filming of tours by Unger highlighting Kyle Ranch. Johanna coordinated the entire event, arranged for the site to be spruced up prior to filming, and ensured access to the film crew. Johanna, at no cost to the city, spent over eight hours in the 100 plus degree temperature with the film crew on a Sunday. Johanna's dedication to the city of North Las Vegas and her love of Kyle Ranch prompted her to go above and beyond. She delivered quality assistance and superb customer service. Her willingness to take the initiative to have Kyle Ranch portrayed in the most positive of lights led to a wonderful promotional opportunity for the city and for Kyle Ranch. Johanna, congratulations. Okay, I have the privilege of announcing the team for the fourth quarter. Could we have Patrick Heinrichs, Joe Russo, Sabrina Slavin, Ruby Cervantes, Kim Fletcher, and Garrett DeKai come forward and join us up here. These are the North Las Vegas Library employees, and they're our team. So grab your plaques, and then I'm going to read a little something about you. All right, while Pam does that, the staff of, of the North Las Vegas Library, along with Garrett DeKai, am I saying that right? Yes, All right. Derek DeKai of the Aliante Library demonstrated the highest standards of teamwork and accountability in the process of evaluation, reallocation, disposition, and preparation of the materials, collections for the relocation of the North Las Vegas Library. A shift to emphasizing national standards concerning digital content and workforce development required a major review of the library's materials collection. The staff was required to evaluate the entire collection and only the best was reallocated to City Hall. Other materials were sent to other branch libraries, recycled or sold to, the ben to benefit this library or the library system. The entire review took staff nine months to complete. Thank you so much and congratulations. Library, just for one second, um, Forrest, are you here? Is Forrest here? I just want to make an announcement to the good people in the audience and the library staff that the uh, library director, Forrest, and I got together and decided that libraries were probably one of the most important things that we could give back to our community. And we sat down and set an aggressive agenda to raise $100,000. And I would like to make the announcement. It took us roughly six months, probably, but Forrest and I worked together made a lot of phone calls, saw a lot of people, and we've been able to raise 100 plus thousand dollars for the Friends of the Library. Yay. Now, what we, will, what we will do at another time for us is, uh, is announce who was so special to us when we can do a better presentation for it, you know? But I do want to thank, you are very important to the, to the residents of the city of North Las Vegas. Thank you for everything you do, for the pleasant experience our people get when they come into your library. And for us, we'll do something special uh, soon and let people know a little bit more about how our campaign went, okay? But I did want to recognize why your people were here. Thank you for your leadership. <laughs> Madam Clerk, uh, please begin with the agenda. Approval of regular City Council meeting agenda of December 17, 2014 for possible action. 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight we have uh, several changes to the agenda. Staff has recommended item number three and four under public hearing, as well as item number 29 on the ordinance for final action to be continued to January 21st, 2015. Additionally, item number 13 on the consent be moved to business for dis discussion. With that, uh, the agenda, uh, with that, uh, uh, with those changes, the recommendation is for approval. Great, Council. Any comments or questions on the approval of tonight's agenda as amended? Seeing none, the Chair will take a motion. Move to approve the agenda as amended. Please cast your vote. Item passes. Thank you very much. Mr. McKintrick, I, Leanne, I know you came down here for this particular reason. This, this agenda item has been moved for 30 days for further review. And if you would like to say something, we'll go ahead and allow you to do that. Or you can come back at the appropriate time um, when more understanding of this issue has been taken up by the City Council. What would be your pleasure? Please come forward. Thank you. In the city's consideration of these items three and four, I request that the city take notice of the FHA grant assurances that were made by the city of North Las Vegas and the North Las Vegas Airport, specifically grant assurance number 10, where the airport must adopt zoning laws that support height restrictions the city did that and now the city is being asked to allow an r3 which is not compatible with the zoning that the grant assurance had requested so there would be a violation of that grant insurance and grant insurance number 19 which re requires the airport to keep clear of present and future hazards and this three-story apartment building across the street from the airport would definitely be a violation of that insurance also. Um, the grant money is discretionary, and I think it would be foolhardy to jeopardize federal grant money for one three-story apartment building and putting the whole apart airport and the economic benefit of the airport to risk. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. McKendrick. We'll enter that into the record. And uh, did you have something you wanted to leave with us that could be passed out to council or? Uh, no, I can bring that at next meeting if you would like. Well, if you have some item uh, that you'd like to make sure we see, if you just bring it back and bring it to the city manager's office, we'll get it passed out for you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, sir. Um, items, oh, uh, set date on appeals filed or required before required public hearings for the city planning commission meetings. Um, Madam Clerk, I direct you to set the appropriate dates for those public hearings on the city planning commission meetings. So noted, Mayor. Thank you very much. We're going to skip item three and four, and we're going to go into the consent agenda. Dr. Liu? Uh, if I may, consent agenda. Matters listed on the consent agenda are considered routine and may be approved by a single motion. However, any consent item may be moved to the business portion of the agenda for discussion at the request of any council member. Thank you very much. Mayor, council, um, consent agenda consists of uh, items number 5 through 12, as well as number 14. The recommendation is for approval. Thank you very much. Council, any comments or questions on the approval of tonight's consent agenda if not I'll take a motion Move to approve please cast your vote so now we've moved item 13 we'll make that the first order of business under new business so yes mayor thank Madam you Clerk, item 13 Allocation of fiscal year 2010-2011 through 2014-2015 federal low income housing trust funds in the amount not to exceed $700,000 for rehabilitation of 115 
townhome style units located in North Las Vegas and authorize the city manager or her designee to negotiate, execute, and amend appropriate agreements for approved program activity as required for possible action. Thank you. May, Counsel, oh, excuse me. May and Council, um, staff re recommends that the item be amended to include the name and address of the 115 townhome units. They are the Rose Garden townhomes located at the 16 East Webb Avenue. With that change, the recommendation is for approval. Great, thank you very much. Council, any comments or questions on this item? If not, I'll take a motion. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I just want some clarification um, from an email that I received today. And it says just why the, I guess the 700, let me make sure I have the right amount here. The $700,000 uh, was not released to an agency like on item 13. I just want some clarification. Well, this person just wanted some clarification about that. Good evening, Mary Ellen Donner, Neighborhood and Religious Services Director. Um, the, the grantee is Category 3. That's a business. Um, they are located at uh, 4576 North Rancho Boulevard, Suite 100. Um, and the signatory on the is Scott Shepard, President, Category 3 Development. So I believe you're, it, it's a business entity. Okay. That, all right. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions on this item? If not, the chair will take a motion. We'll have to say um, as a motion to approve the item as amended per city manager. That would be the motion if somebody wants to make it. Move to approve uh, as amended by the city manager. Right. Please cast your vote. Next item, item number uh, 15. Discussion and review of the amended and restated development agreement ARDA between the City of North Las Vegas and Crescent Bay Development Services, LLC, KBS SOR Park Highlands, LLC, KBS SOR Park Highlands 2, LLC, Standard Pacific of Las Vegas, Inc., Highlands Park Holdings, LLC, and Park Highlands Master Association, Park Highlands East, and the consent and joiner to the ARDA executed by Insight Park <coughs> Highlands, LLC. This was tabled December 3rd, 2014. Thank you, Mr. Groner. I thought, is Mr. Stan Perry in the audience? Okay, we had, but please come up to the front. Mr. Perry uh, directed us to set this meeting up on this particular day so he could be here to address us. And with all due respect, we made that change for him. And I'm looking for Mr. Perry. Uh, my name is Jim Zeter. I'm the managing partner of Insight Park Islands. Uh, Stan represents my interests, and I don't know why he's not here. Okay, would you stay up here then? And, oh, yeah, and replace? sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, Mr. Gronauer, would we? Yes. I'd like to give you a little presentation, if you wouldn't mind, on this. Um, I've been here a year and a half, yes. and this has been in play for a long period of time, and it seems to me that there's a an effort to get this approved. We split this development into two agreements, the east and the west, to encourage the development and to get things moving. But now I'm recognizing that the east side seems to be delaying. And so I wanted to bring you and Mr. Perry to discuss what we can do or what's not happening so that we can move North Las Vegas forward. Yes, <clears throat> Your Honor, members of the council, my name is Bob Gronauer, 8345 West Sunset Road. I'm here representing the uh, owners on the what, what was formerly known as Park Highlands East Parcel. Um, let me take a couple minutes here, fairly short, to give you a brief history of what we've done and where we are today. Um, as you know, on June 18th, earlier this year, um, the goal was to separate the Park Highlands Development Agreement into two, two developments. One was for Park Highlands West, the other one was for Park Highlands East, as they were termed. There was also the um, a, another uh, property owner from Insight, which is Mr. Zeter, who's here tonight, um, that requested to have their own standalone development agreement to be done on that date, and they signed the consent and joinder that was 
uh, subsequently recorded. Since then, and as I told you at the June 18th meeting, that the Park Highlands West development was going to stay as is, which as we are, st as I'm standing here today, um, Park Highlands West is currently moving forward with their plans for development on that parcel itself. That's the 600 acres. On our approximate 2,000 acres, I did tell you back in June 18th that we're going to come in with something fun, new, exciting, and it was going to be totally different than what you have seen and what was approved in 2006. So what I have uh, on the overhead here is that I want to run through this fairly quickly with you as a new concept. First of all, what we've decided to do, it's no longer called Park Highlands East. Um, the name of this area is called the Villages at Tule Springs. And I think it's perfect timing since uh, to announce that here publicly since the Tule Springs bill has been formally adopted by Congress or by, by the federal government with respect to the bill itself. Um, so with respect to the t uh, villages at Tule Springs, what we wanted to do is, de is to develop the property into four separate villages. As you can see located here, we have village one. We have village number two, which is located over in this area, which is uh, north of the uh, Beltway itself. South of the Beltway, west of Commerce, we have what is known as village three, 3A and 3B. And then down over this area, and not too far west of the uh, Losi and south of the Beltway, um, you have what is known as village four. One of the things that we've met with your staff and we've <clears throat> showed them new pro uh, product of what we're going to be proposing, which is definitely new and distinct, which is up in this area, which is going to be an active adult community. In that active adult community, um, we've redesigned the project itself in what is known as Village 2. It is going to have approximately 2,500 homes that are going to be un under active adult, which is totally different than what was uh, proposed and uh, what was proposed in 2006. And that was a little bit of a secret that we were holding for several months just until we were able to separate on the June 18th meeting. The other thing that I do want to mention for you is if you take a look in Village 3A, which is the, south, uh, the southwest uh, portion of the property itself, about 150 acres. Regardless, whatever happens, we believe by the time, um, sometime in the next several months, you'll be seeing this area being developed. We're already in negotiations with some home builders who are in interested to come and build in this area. So typically, as you can see here, we're dividing up the property about the two to 2,000 acres in the village one, two, three, and four. We're uh, currently in negotiations with your city staff. Um, we've been meeting with parks, we've been meeting with public works, your planning department, your city attorneys, in negotiating what we call a new development agreement that will be coming to you uh, uh, shortly. And with that being said, um, you're gonna see some new alignments of road alignments, some of the park realignments itself, um, some, uh, some increased parks and trails in certain areas. So overall, we believe that we're going to be coming back with a substantial better plan than what you saw back in 2006. And then the last thing I do want to point out is what I think is also very important is the overall reduction in density of what we're proposing is it's 25%. That's one quarter of the density that was initially approved or that's currently approved for this project. We're going to be reducing the density by 25%. Thank you, Council. If you just give me a second, I've been working very hard on this, and if you have questions, I'd like to ask my questions first. Maybe I'll answer some of yours. Um, on the west side, we've had some problems over there with flood uh, infrastructure and stuff like that. Have we resolved all the challenges on the west side now? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, thanks to uh, Ms. Duty and the Public Works, uh, department. We had our meetings. Uh, we had to go back and forth with BLM, with regional flood control, which took a lot of time. But at the end of the day, we resolved that, I think, a few weeks ago, uh, a week after Thanksgiving. So our guys are moving forward on civil plans and whatever they need to do for the construction to commence in uh, Park Highlands West. Thank you. And one of the interesting things is we had a conversation, and I told you in January, I wanted you guys to turn dirt out there. I was tired of it seems like billionaires beating up millionaires, such babies. I couldn't stand it. Are we going to be turning dirt in there in January? Um, I, we're going to be turning dirt, but I don't think it may be on the property itself. There is another project that we got to bring, which is a, um, um, a connection. That, that I, I'm drawing a blank right now, but we're going to be doing some construction because we need to do like a 
sewer override. Um, we did an oversizing agreement with the city of North Las Vegas. So we will be commencing that construction to allow us to move next to start developing on that property. But we will be commencing construction. It may not be on the property itself on the west side, but we will be commencing something in January. That's a game plan. Okay, I read in the paper the other day that the Kyle Canyon area over there, their master plan is moving forward, and a lot of people that we want to do business with us now are probably going to look elsewhere because of some of the directions that your organization group has taken, and I'm not satisfied with that. But, but anyway, um, you and your group have been meeting with city staffers, and I've been keeping up tra track with it to get this new development agreement moving, right? Yes. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yes. This gentleman up here, I don't want to pick on him, but he has people that have told me they would be here at the meeting tonight, and they're, they're going to actually put him in the, in the, in the, the sites of me then because that Mr. Perry isn't here. Has Insight met with any city staffers about moving forward on a new development agreement? Because we're having a situation on one piece of property that seems to be stalling everything, and it's recognized by now. So is, have, is my question once again, has Insight met with city staff about moving forward on a new development agreement? And you said the answer is no. Mm, to my understanding, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to yeah, answer staff. Yeah, Mr. Mayor and Council, I am not aware of any um, communications with city staff and Insight. I have had communications with Mr. Perry, um, so I can't have direct communications with, you know, Insight directly, but I have spoken to their council, but nothing of um, any substance, really just about scheduling the meeting and, and informing him that, we would be discussing uh, the progress of any um, potential amendment to the Park Highland East Development Agreement. And that's the downside of having the absence of Mr. Perry today. Bob, have you and your group met with Insight about the new development agreement? Uh, no, we, we've tried. Um, I've reached out to Mr. Perry and uh, Marin Perry also. Um, I was told a few weeks ago that they would not talk to us until after the new year, after the holiday season. Um, I made them aware that we needed to talk to them <clears throat> about the development itself. Um, I don't recall if I left in the message about the road alignment that we wanted to discuss um, that, that would in, interest them and interest us. But I have reached out a couple times, and the bottom line is we're told wait until the beginning of the year. Okay. Has Insight involved in developing or approving plans and the road alignment near their property? I'll give you a chance because your your council is not here, and that bothers me. Okay, so let me just go through this, and you can answer the questions. So once again, has Insight involved in any developing or approving plans for the road alignment near their property? We've tried to have those discussions um, recently, um, but I can tell you a part of the purchase and sale when we initially came in through this over the last year two. Um, everybody was made aware, all the property owners paid a certain amount of money to engineer plans, lay out land plans itself as far as configurations that we're looking at and to do certain land swaps. So we wanted to come back and revisit that with uh, Mr. Perry's client so we'd have those discussions. So last but not least here, it's the same thing over just one more time. You've reached out to talk to them about a new development agreement, but they've said we're not interested in talking to you until next year. We don't really give a crap about what's going on over there. It's, it's just not interested to us right now to get into this, that issue. Is that correct? I've reached out and I was told not to talk to and that they wouldn't be available until next year. Mr. Zeter, I'll let you jump in now. Okay. I just want to ask you, why haven't you talked to I appreciate that. Why haven't you talked to them? What is, what do you, what is your game Well, a little here? bit of, a little bit of background, um, just so you understand. Um, we came into this project in September of 2013. So we picked up where American West kind of left off in the whole process. Um, when we bought the property, we recognized that there was a number of issues between both sides of the East and the West, which you guys are fully aware of. Uh, when we came to the, to the time of May, I believe, there was a requirement or a request on our part to sign an enjoinder. Uh, and from what I understood, what that enjoinder meant was is that it allowed the East side and the West side to continue their process separately so what if that's that's true correct okay so what that meant to me is signing the enjoinder was is that uh, Crescent Bay and their group they could move forward at any level that they chose to and that could be right or wrong 
but I believe that was the case. So there was many times when I talked to Stan and I talked to Marin uh, and requested um, to know whether I was thinking if this is being correct or not. So I think our interpretation is, is that Crescent Bay and Standard Pacific and whoever else that owns property on the east side can move forward without us. And so I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I needed to come up here and find out. I did try to meet with you. We talked to the, to the city attorney to set up that meeting before today. So it hasn't been that we're, we're not engaged. It's just, do we have to be engaged at some point in time? Is it today or is it tomorrow? Uh, we don't feel the need to come through the process now because we're not in control of 2,000 acres. This is these guys who own a, a majority share of the property. You know, they can do whatever they want from what I understand. We fall with under the, the guidelines of the master plan uh, ordinance, correct? So whatever it is that you're going to require us to do at some point in time is still going to be under that ordinance. So I'm not quite sure I understand what the what the, the need is for my property to come in and be a part of this process today. No one's been able to explain that to me. Yeah, well, let's, let's work on that. Okay. Mr. Grunauer or city staff, who would like to take, Mr. Zeter would like to some. Well, just to, re just to respond, I, I am aware that Mr. Zeter and his, well, through his counsel reached out to me and I did reach out back to him and I have not heard back. Um, so, of course, I offered my availability and staff's availability to meet with you and your, and your attorney, of course, at any time, as we would with any person wanting to develop in North Las Vegas. Of course, that courtesy was extended. And I will follow up again, but I followed up twice and I haven't heard back. And it is, you know, in Mr. Perry's defense, it's the holidays, but I have called him a couple of times. Um, with respect to Insight Park Highlands LLC not being a part of this, they own two parcels, but there's still a master plan development that's going on around it. So it would be great if the city makes any changes going forward to change any road alignments or anything else with the master plan involving this development. We definitely need to have all property owners involved, whether it be Crescent Bay right. or Standard Pacific or um, yeah. Insight. So their input and cooperation is definitely necessary for the city to feel comfortable for both the city manager and I to recommend to you to approve any type of amended development agreement, whether that be an amended development agreement directly with um, Crescent Bay or even one directly with Insight. Having consensus for all the property owners in this area is definitely something that I feel would be necessary to recommend to you to um, to approve any other amended de development agreement. Let me help her just for a second and I'll give I, I, I will treat you right. Sure. We had a discussion that these these conversations are going so poorly between these two yeah. that one group wanted to indemnify the city and move on around them. Can you address that? Well, I wouldn't be comfortable recommending that to you at this time because I haven't had time to review any documentation as to the extent of it. It would always be my recommendation for all of the developers and property owners in that area to attempt to work something out so that they can present a nice plan a complete plan to the city um, I understand that they're separate property owners and they don't they can have their separate agreements but it's always in the city's best interest to have all the property owners involved so they understand where the roads and where the right-of-ways are going to be and what the what the actual plan for the development is going to be Mr. Uh, yeah I'd absolutely agree with that um, however there have been discussions that we've had with Bob and with his with uh, Jeff who I don't believe is here about the road alignments uh, so we don't really have an interest in modifying the road alignment so let's say that's the case, um, because it's been it's publicly dedicated right away. So when we bought the asset, we bought bought it based on what was currently there and as it was provided. So okay, uh, then we follow through with the process that this is under a master plan ordinance. So you already have something that exists that allows Crescent Bay to move forward. They know the street alignments. They may want to modify them for their own benefit or for the city's benefit. That could be the case. But as far as we're concerned, we really don't have any need today to go in and do any modifications. None of that's standing in the way of Crescent Bay and from the city moving forward. And I don't, I don't know what that is that's telling me that that's not the case. If you guys can tell me, hey, you know, what you're doing is, you know, not in, in being a good neighbor. I want to be a good neighbor. We own property out there. I've owned property in North Las Vegas for 25 years. Uh, I like the city. I enjoy working in the city, uh, but I still don't understand this process. So, you know, like you said, there was a bunch of billionaires on millionaires working in this thing for years and years. It's still the case, uh, and and they are the largest shareholder. 
they have to make certain decisions that will benefit their investment. But they shouldn't come through the process and try and have me and have the city, you know, do what we can to make their investment better. That's what they're searching for. So I just want to move forward with this thing. I like my property. I like where it sits. I like that it's in the master plan. But I don't have any need to do anything. If they're saying that I'm not being cooperative, this is the same discussion I had with them in May. That's why I signed the enjoinder. Go move forward, do whatever you need to do to make your project work. That's where it sits. Mr. Groner, is the road a big issue? Um, because apparently it's not a big issue to him. Yeah, because um, actually when um, Insight came into the group, they paid money inside the group itself. They paid for the engineering plans. They paid for everything that we were discussing on the road alignments itself. They've seen similar maps of what we wanted to do out there to fix that area. Um, there were discussions about land swap agreements, moving roads around. Since May, when, when we had the, the ARDA done and everything else taken care of, we wanted to come back and sit as good neighbors. Look, I do this. I've been doing this 18 years. What do you do when you're getting ready to develop next door to somebody? You call them up. You explain the, you explain the process of what you want to do and, and have that conversation. It's common courtesy. I tried 60 days, 6-0, six, 60 days to get a response to say, can you at least sit with us to have a simple conversation whether or not we can move the road alignment and do the land swap that we discussed over the last year and a half with the other eight property owners. That's all. The answer is no. The answer is no. Okay. Then we'll look at our options. But the fact of the matter is, is when you get in stonewalled and then you turn around and you're getting told, we'll just talk to you next year. Look, that's not good faith. And to walk up here and just say, I don't know the process. You know the process. When you own property in North Las Vegas and you've been here 25 years, you know what that process is. I know what that process is. You would be chastising me if I opted not to work with Jim Zeter. If the roles were reversed and you have every right to say, Bob, you should at least have a meeting for the best interests of the community. Let's sit here and work this out. Right, wrong, or whatever we want to decide there. The fact of the matter is, we're ready to move on. We want to move on with development. We've been trying to be as nice as possible. We're not trying to surprise anybody. We'll come and we'll, we'll apply for our applications and deal with what we need to deal with if they don't want to sit down with us and communicate and try to work something out that makes sense. Um, so that's it. I, I don't want to expand anymore, but I don't want it to sound like we're just standing here as big developers and trying to push something through. No, we've tried. And this, this here today, by explaining to you what we've done, Everybody else responds, and that's all that we've asked. And if they don't want to respond, and if they're saying they don't want to agree to anything, then we'll just move through the process in its normal due course. You don't want to respond, and you don't want to go through the due process. Is that well, correct? Well, that, that's not quite fair. But um, So when we bought the property, we were a part no, of... No, 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 I'm past that. There was a not concept of a spa, if you guys remember that. So we all contributed money to this. This is what Canarelli, the, the previous owners, had been a part of. We continue to go through that with Bob and with his clients. When it got to the point of May rolled around, there was this desire for this council and for the, for the master plan to keep moving forward. We went ahead and agreed to sign the enjoinder. Prior to that, we had many discussions about the roadways and how we didn't really have any interest in modifying them. So them to say today that, that uh, we never sat and had that discussion, we did. It was, it was going from that point in May until now that caused me to finally come up here and say, look, I, I don't want to stop them. I don't want to prevent them from going out and doing what they need to do to make it for the best interest of themselves and for the city of North Las Vegas. We just don't feel like we have a need to do anything beyond what we've done today. We're just landholders. We just, we just want to hold the property and let the development happen around it. We bought the property based on where that roadway network is right now. Why we don't want to change it? There's we have no reason to see it to be changed. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure, but we have had this discussion many times. Okay, so that's good, Bobby. He doesn't want to do business with you. He's very happy with the piece of property he has. He thinks it's going to work to his benefit in the future. Are you pushing there, him around, and, yeah, or there, do you there accept are that as a good faith bargain and, and move forward? And, and that's fine. Out of all due respect, I respect Mr. Zeter. Uh, the end result is, is if it's out here in the public that they do not want to sit down and have those discussions with us, what we'll do is move through the process. We can legally apply for the applications to do the amendment to the Master Streets and Highways Plan. 
We'll come back, we'll have these discussions, and we'll deal with those issues. The bottom line is we're ready for development. We want to go forward with a project itself. We tried to do the right thing in communication. So the next step is, is we'll just move through the process and see where, the, where and what, what the end result's going to be. I mean, that's all that we have. I'm going to open up the council right forward. now. But uh, as we sit here today, you're ready to, to accept that motion and let them go ahead. And there's no coming back here in town. Well, well, we had second thoughts. If they elect to uh, uh, request a amendment for streets and highways, uh, that would be something that we'd want to defend. Because obviously they would be coming in and they asked you or they were willing to request you to indemnify or they were going to indemnify you for a suit that I would bring if they changed the streets. So, you know, that doesn't that strike to you as, as something he interesting? He just said he's not going to do it. Oh, well, I hope they don't do it right. for that matter. Uh, so we're comfortable with what we have. We, you know, being under the master plan, we get the ordinance. We, we understand that. We know that where the streets and highways are that currently exist. Um, it, it's not like we're bad numbers. We're just saying this is what we own. Uh, if you if you want to come talk to us some more about something other than what we have already, okay. But I, I don't know what that would be. Okay, let me open this up to the council then. Sure. Council, do you have any questions at this point? I'm assuming I, I have one. Okay, Councilman Wagner. Um, so, I, I guess I want to understand this a little better. If roads are changed or things are changed, and and, and Bob's group goes forward with with changing anything, and the council approves that, we, we approve changes. Then, what kind of liability do we have? These guys are developing under Mr. Zeter has a has a uh, a parcel that maybe won't line up the roads that, as they were dead end or or stop. So. It, 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 what does that do to this city, to the city council? What does it do to Mr. Zeter? Is he going to come and sue the city because we changed just, everything he around him? He just said that he, he would. Didn't... He just said that he would. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. sure I understood mm -hmm. that. That. Um, uh, and it, but so it sounds to me like it'd be beneficial to get together with Bob and talk about the roads and let's find out and the rest of the city council and find out what what we're doing here. It makes absolutely no sense to me that you won't sit down with Bob and talk about this. Because um, if we're going to change everything around you, and then all of a sudden we got dead ends, you come back and sue the city. I mean, that isn't good for our, our citizens. Not good for us. Not good for any, anybody that we can't have that conversation. So, kind of, may I respond? Kind of, you may absolutely Thank love you. to hear your response. Thank you. Um, the way the street patterns are done already, uh, the way they exist. Yes, I understand that there's some modifications that they need to make to satisfy the development as a whole. Um, when you look at the overall project. Whether it's Commerce, Revere, whatever name that street is, it goes north from a future interchange. We own a part of that frontage. Uh, and all of it's going to lead down, for the most part, you know, on either side, left or right. It's all going to lead down into that interchange, you hope. And that's, that's going to be their marketing window. That's how they're going to brand it, or they should anyway. So, you know, where our property sits is on that corner, that's the northwest corner of the site, that has about 600 feet of frontage on commerce and 1,200 feet of frontage on whatever that major arterial is right now that leads into that corner. So yes, we would have a great complaint uh, if that was changed. It doesn't mean they have to change everything. It's just we're looking for that frontage to be on that corner because corner, that's what we purchased. Right, so, so the development agreement as it sits, does it call for an overpass at, at, at commerce? Or yeah, what, there's what? A, an overpass is scheduled, um, and it's not under construction right now. I know there are plans to build out the Beltway in that area, but one of the important parts, uh, points that I do want to make is, is I might as well get this out there. Look, we sat with Mike Montana numerous of times, and I'm sure Mr. Zeter was aware of this. Is uh, the property itself has always been negotiated in this area that we do a land swap, that you'd still have frontage out on your property. You know, we would give you the same amount of acreage because it's cooperation. At sure. the end of the day, it's reshaping the property, giving you the same amount of property, giving you the frontage that you have. No one's trying to take something away completely. It's just the, the work of what we've all been working together. And when you don't get any responses for, as I said, 60 days, you know we're here well unfortunately and and so for me what this what what it means is you know what if the city council decides and after looking at the you know looking at everything and working it out with the with the rest of you what if we decide we're just going to dead end commerce we're going to go down to north we're going to go down somewhere else or move up this way and we're just gonna we're just and that land will be stinking worthless it's you know if, if we decide to stop it right there and, and reroute traffic somewhere else 
So I just, I, I guess I really just don't understand why you can't get down, sit down and just say, you don't have to agree to everything or just, but just make them aware of your thoughts. And, and, and so we can move forward with, with this. Cause it sounds like, yeah, you're willing to go forward with where, where we are with the current development agreement as it sits. But if everything changes around you, then we got a big problem in the future to me, it seems like. So anyway, that's my comment. So Mayor Pro Tem? Well, I'm just not going to get too complicated with it. I'm just going to say this. This is a project that's very important to the city, and it's a project that we are trying to move forward on. And you're trying to protect your property right, and, and I, I get that. I, I respect that. Um, but at the same time, people are trying to get a hold of you. They're trying to help you protect that right, and you guys are not responding, and you're holding us up. So what the heck? Get off the dime, start working with us, and help us get our project moving. I'll make, uh, may I again? So it's not that we haven't responded. They're just not hearing what we're telling them. So it's been months and months and months that we keep going through this process. And from what I understood is that we had the opportunity to create our own standalone development agreement. That's what I understood to be the case. And so there was no priority of time from what I understand. So you guys got to correct me. Because maybe the All right, reason, we're going to correct you right now. We have a priority of time. Maybe the reason why that, that this has taken so long is maybe I'm under the wrong impression. So when the enjoinder got executed in May, from what I understood, that gave them the opportunity to move forward with any which way they needed to be able to move forward. Not to my detriment. I gave them the opportunity to go out and do what they needed to do. So, But at the same so, time, is that, is that true? what they are doing can affect you. And they need to be able to talk to you I and to your attorney to be able to reach you so that and, – and, and you need to come in. If you want to do a separate uh, agreement, that's fine. But you need to come in and start talking to people. I understand. But when is the – let's say I was some guy that didn't even live here. I just owned the property and that was it. So what's the – why am I under so much scrutiny or, or pressure – to come in and try and solve a 46-acre development plan and a 24-acre development plan when I'm just the landowner holding onto the property for a period of time. These guys came in and talked to me. I told them exactly what I was looking for. They, they, can, they don't have to move the streets. This is them wanting to move the streets for their own benefit. But is that to my detriment? Yeah, it could be. You talk about freeway frontage, right? You talk about the depth. I look at those types of things. I can see that I've got frontage on a major arterial. I've got 900 feet of depth or 700 feet of depth. I got all that freeway frontage. They want to modify that for their benefit. So I, you I can't say that, that I haven't talked to but them. Normally I have many what times. what happens here is conversation. Correct. Conversation occurs so that hopefully you work out something with them that benefits them, that benefits you, and benefits the city. And it becomes a win 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 here. Instead, right. what we've got is a holdup that's a lose 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 for everybody. So is there a way that we can start working together to move this project along for the residents of North Las Vegas, for you in the development community who normally are nipping at my heels, yelling at me as a council person, saying, hey, I'm paying taxes on this property. Um, I'm sitting here holding this property, and we want to get it developed. And, and now you're sitting here with all the time in the world. So I, I guess I don't typically get it. Well, I Normally there's a rush on your end, too. I, but see, that's the thing. There is no rush on my end. And so I signed the enjoinder. I gave them the opportunity to continue to move forward. Well, so you're how the is only that... one who doesn't, you know, who, who wants to sit back. If you want to keep paying property taxes on it I... and, and, and not develop it, that's up to you. But well, can you not hold the rest of us up? So I, I didn't intend to hold anybody up. That's why I signed the enjoinder. Was that so you guys could move forward and do whatever you want to do? I don't know how that's preventing anybody or from Look, pressing Look, you're either going to be a team player in this. Uh, you can't be both. You can't sit here and say, I want to be back here and have nothing to I'm do not. with the development, and I signed this agreement, and now I'm out of it, uh, knowing that anything they do is going to affect you. With, uh, I mean, realistically, this doesn't work. With all due respect, I understand that I am under a master plan ordinance. I believe that's the case. And if, if that's true, I believe that's true. Tell me if it's not. I signed an enjoinder agreement that provided everyone the opportunity to move forward if they elected to. I believe that's the case as well. I bought a piece of real estate. It has frontage. It has roadway networks. It has all these different things that are associated with it. I believe that's the case. 
So I still don't understand what I've done that's prevented Crescent Bay from following through with doing the development. I don't understand it. Bobby, answer that question for him. You're speaking for Crescent I, Bay. I, I know. I mean, we were, we're hitting this issue for the sixth time. We're all adults. You've heard loud and clear. He's claiming his last communication in May was the last time he ever wanted to talk to us. We've been talking to the, to the attorneys to try to get an answer. The answer was a few weeks ago, we'll talk to you in January. So it's a different conversation we're having tonight. And tonight he's now saying, we don't want to talk to you in January. We don't ever want to talk to you. So I don't know what it is that he's asking for. He says, I told him, I didn't, I, now I'm telling you I don't want to talk. But his counsel says January or whenever after the new year we talk. The bottom line is, remember this. There's a, there, there is the implicit message here. You have somebody who's looking to develop property to improve North Las Vegas. You have somebody who doesn't want to improve property but says, you touch my property, I'm going to sue you. Let's just go call it what it is. That is fine. Let's move on with development. That, that's instead of going back that's somewhat forward. inflammatory. That's not true. I didn't say that at all. I didn't say anything about suing anybody. And I don't even know where that came from. And you can look at the records. Mayor, I don't I don't say anything about suing anyone. Mayor and Council, if I may, I just don't want this to turn into something that's already gone, I think, uh, too far. We know I know that is it is the pleasure of you um, to go forward with some type of development agreement because we know this is potentially the last master plan development agreement for the city of North Las Vegas. It's very clear in the consent and joinder, and it's all public record, that it specifically says that Insight agrees that it will negotiate with the city in good faith to prepare a development agreement for the Insight land that is in harmony with the overall development contemplated by the original agreement, and that such standalone agreement with Insight must be in place prior to any submission of any plans for their land. So I will make attempts, I will continue to make attempts in writing to reach out and ensure that the overall plan for development for Villages at Tule Springs, the new name of the agreement, um, and that Insight is aware of that and they've already agreed that it needs to be cohesive and in place with the overall development of the plan and they've actually agreed in writing to work in good faith with the city. So That's, that's we correct. Will, and we, we have will. a standalone agreement that has been drafted. And the standalone agreement is different than from what I what he's talking about. So we it's were it. we were committed to come in. No, we're done. No. You've 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 <laughs> Our, so, oh, you babe, have blown you, your opportunity. No, maybe I misunderstand. So no, is there a standalone agreement? I want to ask him a question now. Huh. You mentioned the former mayor. Is this the former mayor did something in his reign of term here, or the speculator land flipper that the the the, this, this, yeah, the uh, his line of his employment now? He, That's what he, whatever his uh, his employment as a real estate. <laughs> guy he was a part of all these meetings that we've had over a two-year period but not since he but this is since he's left the city council nothing yeah. happened previous yeah, yeah, to yeah. that yeah absolutely yeah this was post city council as mayor yes okay so, uh, sorry. Miss, if you have something to say to solve my problem i'll listen i'd if love you to solve your problem that's why i came here don't you understand a, if you want to if you want to continue to be an obstructionist you're recognized now uh, as a huge obstructionist in North Las Vegas. I am not trying to be an obstructionist. I don't care, but you're recognized now I as that. I have a development, a standalone development agreement sitting on my desk. Now, from this is from what I understand. I wish Stan was here to kind of explain this with me. So I have a standalone development agreement that I thought was something that I was doing on the 46 acres and the 24 acres. And that's all it was for, was a standalone agreement for those two pieces. Isn't that, isn't that what the enjoinder talks about? is for us coming in with our own standalone agreement and being harmonious with the development for, of the rest of the project? You know what? I hate you being your own counsel. Your lawyer should be here. That's not fair to you. I'm, I'm going to recognize that, okay? You've been advised poorly by your legal man by not being here. If you want, I'll set up a meeting with you guys. I'd love to. And we'll do it. And we're going to come to a resolution or we're going to do something to get you out or something so we can continue on for the betterment of North Las Vegas and not to the detriment of worrying about you losing a few more bucks on a deal. Is that fair enough? I, I know the game. I know your I know your angle <laughs> and I would like to get this solved for you and for them. I think you're under a mis misinterpretation. Well, you, you, you bring get the your, wrong impression. You bring your attorneys with you and we'll figure it out. Fair enough? Sure. And absolutely. if I'm proved wrong, I apologize. I still didn't get the answer though. You will get it at the meeting. Well I'm just looking for counsel. Oh, if you want counsel. Not have, that's not the right answer. Well I give counsel to mayor and council you should so you'll be in that same meeting of course if my if the mayor and a council members there i'll definitely be there all right good yeah i'd like to get it cleared up thank you very much okay thank you this was a 
an item that wasn't up for vote at this time. Nope. Mr. Bouchard, this isn't something we're taking co comment on right now. We're going to have to work this out throughout the city manager's office. Um, item 16. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mayor. Item 16, lease and an addendum to the United States House of Representatives District Office Lease in the amount of $51,660 for Crescent Hardy, a member-elect of the United States House of Representatives, to use certain portions of City Hall to conduct operations for possible action. Council, any comments or questions on this item? Uh, well, I'd like to make one. I, you know, uh, what was it, two years ago, um, I, I thought it was really remarkable of Congressman Horsford to make the decision to come into our city hall um, to build the relationship between us and our congressional delegation um, and to really recognize the role that North Las Vegas plays uh, in that congressional district. Uh, and I really do appreciate uh, Congressman-elect uh, Crescent Hardy for continuing that trend. Um, I, I think it is... Uh, a great uh, outreach to us um, and so I would recommend that we approve item 16 uh, and the with the lease and addendum to allow for him to come into uh, the North Las Vegas City Hall well spoken thank you very much um, any more questions on this item if not we have a motion please cast your vote Thank Next you, item, right. settlement agreement with 5th and Centennial LLC et al. In a form approved by the city attorney's office in the total amount of $6,300,000 to be paid over time to resolve any and all issues related to Clark County 8th Judicial District Court case number A, 10609283-C, Nevada Supreme Court case number 58530, and United States Supreme Court number 14-348 for possible action. Thank you very much. Um, Doc, I mean, Attorney Morgan, could you give us a little update on what's going on here? I'd be more than happy to have Dr. Lude do that. No. <laughs> well, this has been a very long um, litigation that clearly my office, um, and I'm, I know mayor and council are not pleased with. Um, this was a case, um, an inverse condemnation and pre-condemnation damages case, and the uh, judge decided that there were pre-condemnation damages and found that their inverse condemnation claim was not ripe. So we currently have a judgment that is owed currently for $4.3 million. This settlement agreement would stretch out the payments over um, up into July 1st of 2016, so we wouldn't have to make that bulk payment up front. Additionally, this payment plan includes um, the an interest amount that both parties agreed on. And actually, instead of paying interest on this over time, we included the interest amount in these payments. There are also two um, major business terms that the landowners would agree to dedicate the 75 feet of right of way along North 5th. That was one of their major contentions in the lawsuit, so that would no longer be something that could be litigated in the future. Additionally, there is another um, agreement regarding a potential um, North 5th Street collector flood control project that would be going through the parcel um, that we agreed to as well. Um, so this is not um, something that I'm happily recommending, but something that I would recommend that you approve in order to put this uh, matter behind us and be able to focus on future development in the city. There is something that was um, included in the settlement term sheet that was not included in the agenda item that we received and that is that any future case um, that they believe they may have for inverse condemnation and it's very speculative because we don't have a development plan that's been submitted yet for that parcel would go before the same judge that heard this exact case. Um, that is something that that we did not agree to, but it's something that they um, felt that needed to be included in this agreement. So that was the only, that's the only other matter that I think I should bring to council's attention since so that was not included in the agenda item. I can respond just a little bit of that. I had some little time today and I made a call to Mr. Brian Lee and we went over this and told him that I had appreciated them. We met them. Mr. Cothart, I think is his name was, I went and talked to them. I think they're going to be great neighbors. Um, this is just something that we're going to put behind us. Um, but I called a couple friends of mine and somebody in the Supreme Court. Uh, I was discussing um, doing that. And one of the things here is, is in the event the landowner files a claim in state court for inverse combination, the parties agree to stipulate to transfer any new case to, to Judge X. I won't say his name, 
But I called Mr. Lee up and said, this almost looks like this man is on your payroll. And we cannot, and I was told by a judge, you cannot stipulate that in this form. So in order to make sure that he's not involved in this, because in the future, if there is an inverse combination, it just I guess it takes a ticket and it takes its round and it goes to the right judge. And right, stuff like you that. just you take your you file your case and they automatically assign the judge. Yeah, to now, you. if somebody doesn't want a judge, I guess they can. You can preempt them. You can strike preemptive them. judge and get out of judge. Okay, but after talking to the court system, they said this this will not fly. This is not agreeable to the court system, and you cannot expect them to follow through with this. I never heard personally back from Mr. Lee today. And so I'm going to make a motion uh, reluctantly that we accept these, uh, uh, these agreements that you've made and worked very hard on, uh, minus um, the, uh, in the event the landowners file a claim in state court for interest combination, the parties agree to stipulate a transfer in any new case to Judge X. That, can't, that is not legal and binding. And so I'll make the credit that we amend it to take that word out, and then we will follow staff's approval and put this behind us. So that would be my motion. Comments? Yeah, comments. I, I know there's a motion on the floor, but I, I would uh, just ask a question first. So uh, just for the record, what are we putting down and what are we paying over time? Maybe Mr. Adair well, can come and uh, Yeah, I can, I can start it and he could fill in any gaps that I have. We've already made a payment of $1.5 million that was made on October 10th of 2014. We've had two mediations, one with an internal mediator, actually three, and, and uh, two just with the parties. And when the settlement term sheet was signed, and I just received a copy about probably less than two hours ago, that would be another payment of $1 million. Our funds are currently being held at the constable, so it would just be the constable releasing those funds to the landowners. The next payment would be $1.9 million on July 1st of 2015, with the last payment of $1.9 million on July 1st of 2016. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, I guess my concern is, you know, we, we're, we're so tight with our budget anyway. We've got some uh, negotiations coming up with our collective bargaining units and, and uh, uh Mr. Adair, are we going to be able to uh, to do this and work through? Um, $2 million is a big, big hole to fill for the next two years. Yes, uh, Mayor and City Council. The challenge that we had with um, settling this, um, do I have a tie there for you, Mayor? Um, the, ch the challenge that we have is if we were to take the entire settlement amount during the current year's budget, we would have to significantly go back through, um, evaluate our existing expenditures for the, the remaining half of the year and figure out where we could continue to cut, and that was going to be a, a very deep cut. What's proposed here in this settlement is taking it in three uh, almost equal cuts of uh, you know, about two, two and a half million dollars a year for three years, one this year and, and the, next, the next two years. That is, that is a little more palatable for the city in our cash flow situation to, to accomplish. Than it would be to take it all in the current year so it is our recommendation that this settlement agreement would be better for um, not only for the upcoming uh, negotiations and contracts that you're alluding to because it would be able to spread it out over multiple years um, but also in the current year thank you mayor pro tem um, yes now Sandra obviously uh, because this has gotten to you so late today and you, you pretty much have said on the record you just received it about two hours ago. I received the signed copy two hours ago. Or two hours ago. Um, and, and we don't have a copy of the actual uh, agreement attached, uh, though you have laid out the bullet points here. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm going to ask you that you have reviewed this uh, settlement agreement and you are in recommendation of approving it with the exception of uh, the one sentence that the mayor has asked to be stricken. Yes, if, if that is council's desire to, to strike that language about having to go back b before a specific judge. Um, other, th yeah, other than that, I have reviewed it. There's uh, two things, though, and I need to make this also clear uh, for the record for the agenda item. At the time I drafted the agenda item, we already had a term sheet, and we called it a term sheet with specific bullet points that could be signed that would effectuate the release of the um, second $1 million. But I just got it today. So we already have an actual true settlement agreement that you would typically see that is much more substantive. Um, that is currently in council's hands, and I haven't received any comments for that. So if you're okay with approving the settlement term sheet. It's that in I, council's hands? I'm with, sorry, opposing council's. There you go. Yeah, okay. Opposing council's hands. Um, if you're okay with approving the term sheet, if, and if it's council's desire to approve the settlement agreement tonight, you can either 
delegate the authority to the city manager to sign the formal settlement agreement that will include the business terms that have been outlined on the record tonight or you can have it come back before you on a you know on a consent item but when the agenda item was drafted the plan was to have the formal agreement before you tonight for you to approve it and, and we don't have that yet because I only have the term sheet that signed so just a little delay in in getting the final one done Does that make sense for them or okay so what we probably need to do mayor is maybe amend your motion then to give dr. Lou uh, approval to sign the final document so long as it meets the terms of the settlement and includes the amendment that you made to remove that. Well, yes, of course. Now I want to. I want. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Did you have something to say, no. sir? Okay. I want to say I did not. After I got through the district court system, I did not call the Supreme Court. I just knew people there quickly. I could get a hold of you know. But I'd ask a question: Is there anybody here representing Mr. Lee right now, Brian Lee, so that I can understand what his thought process was on this amendment? Do we have anybody here representing him? Okay, we don't. So we have a motion on the floor. Um, please cast your vote. And Mr. Mayor, that motion was as amended? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. That's how it was. Thank you very much. Item passes. Thank you, Mr. Adair. Mayor Council, the next two items uh, are related, so I will read those together. Item number 18, renewal of a contract with Safety National Casualty Corporation in the amount of $117,656 for workers' compensation excess coverage insurance for the period of January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015. Excuse me. Associated item number 19, Great American Contract, and this is for possible action. Item number 19, Contract with Great American E&S Insurance Company for occupational accident buffer layer insurance coverage in the amount of $206,248.77 for the period of January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015, associated item number 18, Safety National Casualty Insurance Renewal for possible action. Thank you. Concerning item 18, Council, any comments or questions on this item? If not, I'll take them. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. Please come forward. I am so sorry. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, we're just here. Joe Hernandez from Branch Hernandez and Aubrey Branch to answer any questions you might have and also to wish you a Merry Christmas. Council, any Thank comments you. or questions? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Seeing none, the chair will take a motion. Move to approve. Please cast your vote. And then item number 19 was read to us. Councilor, any comments or questions on this item? If not, chair. Move to approve. Please cast your vote. Thank you, gentlemen, for your service to our community. Mayor, Mayor, Chris, and Happy New Year's, God, and I'm glad that we didn't have to stand here too long because that air coming down on my head. <laughs> <laughs> you need some hair up there. Uh, item number 20. <laughs> Renewal of the stop-loss coverage agreement with the Sun Life Assurance Company of Canada in the amount of $433,652.04 for the period of January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015 for self-funded and fully insured medical, dental, and vision coverage for police appointed confidential and elected employees for benefits paid in excess of two hundred fifty thousand dollars deductible for possible action great council any comments or questions on this item move to approve please cast your vote item number 21 interlocal agreement and authorization for Clark County to administer an emergency solutions grant for fiscal year 1415 under the McKinney Vento Homeless Assistance Act as amended by the Homeless Emergency Assistance and Rapid Transit to Housing Act of 2009 in an amount not to exceed $135,823 to provide homelessness services and prevention for North Las Vegas residents for possible action. Great. Council, any comments or questions on this item? That'll take a motion. Move to approve. Please cast your vote. Item passes. Ratification of the acceptance of a grant award from the United States Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services under fiscal year 2014 COPS Community Policing Development Program in the amount of $100,000 
to advance community policing efforts for the police department for possible action. Great, thank you. We I've noted here that Chief Cronister is in the audience. Um, Chief, could you come up and explain this grant and what you're hoping to do um, for the community policing efforts of the police department? Good evening, Mayor and Council, Joe Cronister. Um, one of the things that we plan on doing with uh, this grant is obviously further community-oriented policing within the city of North Las Vegas. One of the things that we certainly want to do is use some seed money to get a volunteer and police services program going in the South Area Command, something that we currently don't have today. Uh, we, matter of fact, we just graduated a class last week to add some more uh, VIPs to our cadre of folks that are helping us out. Uh, and are going to do some deployment efforts, obviously, throughout the, uh, the holiday season here. We also plan on using some of this for some, some technology apps that uh, are, have been brought forward to us, especially as we deal, we, we, we talk a little bit about what happened in Ferguson and some of the things that went on there. The one thing that we do know for certain was the social media aspect or component of that really is what exacerbated a lot of things. There's some technology out there that we want to utilize within our department so that we can ensure that we're using those various medians to get that information back out to those specific folks as it relates to the things that we're doing internally, what we're doing in the community, those types of things there as well. One of the other things that we want to do that uh, we bring out some uh, some professionals out here to us to provide classes to our officers dealing with community-oriented policing and the things that we can do, especially targeting Hispanic communities and, and doing so. One of the things that we've con had some conversations as a command staff about is having, we've, we've traditionally each year we do a, a, a Citizens Academy. We want to do a Citizens Academy this year that is for, for Spanish speakers so that we can have that. We've partnered with Metro over the years as they do one, but we would like to host one ourselves and, 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 and make that effort going forward. Um, but for the most part, that's what this grant's going to do. It's, I have to absolutely tell you that it was not without the assistance of Michael Flores and uh, Congressman Horsford, their influence in assisting us. We had an opportunity when the director of the COPS office actually come here to town. His name is Mr. Ron Davis. When he came out here, we were, we were invited to be in his presence and have a discussion and talk about those things that we're doing in North Las Vegas. And that definitely assisted us as we applied for this grant. They actually filed uh, uh, an endorsement on our behalf as well with our grant that I think was definitely assisted us in doing so. Council, any questions? Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem? I don't have a question, but I I'm going to throw a comment in. Um, I have the pleasure and honor to be uh, someone who has gone through our Citizens Police Academy um, and a member of, uh, for a very long time of its alumni association. Um, and I can tell you without a doubt, um, if you don't know what our police officers do, we have a great academy. Um, and the respect that you gain for our officers after going through the academy and seeing um, firsthand what they do uh, is, is absolutely amazing. And I think that um, to reach out now to the Hispanic community and to offer this class to them, um, I think is an absolutely brilliant idea. Um, I, I think it is wonderful for uh, further efforts of uh, connecting the city with our Hispanic population. Um, I think they're going to gain a great deal from it. Um, so I, I think it's just amazing, and I think you guys have done a great job. Um, and I think the, uh, uh, you know, getting this grant is just recognition of what a great job you guys have done. Um, so, Mayor, I would move that we accept this grant award on behalf of our police department. Great. Any more discussions? Um, yeah, Mayor. Okay, sir. Again, Chief, uh, thank you very much for all of your hard work and effort. Um, I had the great privilege, of course, to be at uh, – uh, the last time that uh, I, I think uh, our police department and uh, Metro did one jointly, uh, and uh, they had the graduation of Ron Tobel. I've actually kept in communication with uh, some of the people who graduated from that program, and uh, it, it's very obvious, you know, that, that the direct impact that has uh, upon our community, in particular with the, uh, with, with the Hispanic community. I know that the mayor and, and I, uh, he uh, talked with me. I know he wants to do everything he can. I guess that's one of his goals here in the next new year here to do more outreach to the Latino community. And this goes 
perfectly hand in hand with with, with his vision, and you know I, I know I am totally in uh, in uh, support of everything that you're doing, uh, what the mayor is doing, and um, I can't say enough uh, just how proud I am uh, of all the hard work that, uh, that that you all that you, um, co uh, Congressman Horsford and uh, my good friend Michael Forrest have done all together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. I have a question. So this is going to bring the VIPS program down to the southern part of the city now? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. That, that is our plan, is to actually go out and, and as part of, again, our recruitment efforts in this, in this part of the city, we want to be able to utilize that to, to outfit them with their equipment and things of that nature to get them going. We know it's, it'll take us a little bit of time to do our recruitment and, and to get these things in place, but without this money, without this opportunity, we would, it would be very difficult for us to do so. Right. We talked at one time, in fact, is over a year and a half ago now, about maybe they could help like people park in red zones and stuff like that. They could do a little bit of minor policing, but not confrontational and stuff. Could you, is that moving forward or? Ac actually, part of this money in this seed is to purchase five ticket writers so that we can deploy them with them. We know right now only two citations can be written by volunteers. One of them is a handicap. The other one is parked in a fire zone. They can absolutely cite for those. And uh, the, the ticket writers we purchase will absolutely be deployed to these volunteers and police services. Well, thank you. That's, that'd be great. Chief, do you get, um, when it comes to volunteers for the, for the VIPS program, um, are a lot of those alumni from the academy? The vast majority. And, and those that aren't definitely try to get into the academy and become members of our, our alumni. Wonderful. So that's also going to help make sure that the VIPS is represented um, by, I mean, by increasing the number of Hispanics in the VIP, in the VIPS program um, for the South Area Command, correct? D yes, ma'am. Yes. It, as a matter of fact, we, at our last uh, Citizens Academy graduation that we had, about three weeks ago, um, we actually had some VIPS representatives come there and, and, and mingle and, and, and have those very discussions with all of the graduates of that Citizens Academy. Excellent. Thank you. And for you and that aren't in the building, VIPS is Volunteer in Police Service, correct? That's the title of VIPS. That is correct. Yeah, thank you very much. So if you are interested in this, you can get a hold of Chief. How would somebody get a hold of you to if they expressed an interest in wanting to do this? If they were to send an email to me, uh, there's also a link that they can get into on our w city website that will take them and they can fill out the application and it definitely comes to us and then when we have our academies because we, we do do a one week academy for them we would include them into that. Is process. there an age requirement or anything like that? I mean can from the youngest person at 18 years old to somebody 75 do it? No, absolutely. Um, 18 is the youngest. Uh, and we do have some young folks that are involved in this with us. We have some uh, some retired folks as well. We do not have a limit. We just we make sure that they're definitely well aware of what it is that they are going to the requirements upon them, so that they know they know themselves better than we do. And I guess the time frame would be: can they just choose one day a week, or how, how would if somebody had this desire to support you and help you? Is there a time limit that they'd have to put into service every month? There is a time limit. However, it's how they set it up throughout the course of that month is strictly and totally up to them. I see. Well, thank you very much. Well, we have a motion on the floor to support Chief Kronz during this. Um, please cast your vote. Thank you very much, Chief. Item passes. Thank you. Next item, item number 23, interlocal contract with the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada in an amount not to exceed $1,500,000, funded by the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada for the Clayton Street Centennial Parkway to Hammer Lane Project, CIP Project number 10398 for possible action. Council, any comments or questions on this item? If not, I'll take a motion. Move to approve. Please cast your vote. Item passes. Thank you. Item number 24, construction change order number one with Aggregate Industries SWR Inc. for the North North Fifth Corridor Infill Roadway Project bid number 1442, CIP project number 10360 in the amount of $70,000 
from the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada Fuel Revenue Indexing Funds to increase the construction conflict funds to construct a concrete cap above the existing Kern River gas line and perform required survey services needed to construct the project for possible action. Councilor, any comments or questions this side? If not, I'll take a motion. Move to approve. Please cast your vote. Mayor, the next Mayor and Council, the next two items are related. I will read those together. Resolution number 2528, a resolution of the City Council of North Las Vegas, Nevada, consenting to relinquishment of property interest and maintenance responsibilities from Nevada Department of Transportation for Las Vegas Boulevard, associated item number 26, Nevada Department of Transportation Cooperative Agreement, and this is for possible action. Item number 26, Cooperative Agreement with the State of Nevada, Department of Transportation Acceptance of Funds in the amount of $4,200,000 for the transfer of right-of-way along Las Vegas Boulevard between Tonopah Avenue and Cary Avenue. Associated item number 25, resolution number 2528 for possible action. Great. On, on item number 25, resolution number 2528, Councilor, any comments or questions to this item? Seeing none, we have a motion. Please cast your vote. Item passes. On item number 26, once again, Council, any comments or questions on this item? If not, I'll take a motion. Move to approve. A motion, please cast your vote. Item number 27, resolution number 2524, a resolution permitting the donation of city owned furniture to the Southern Nevada Senior Law, Fir Law Program for possible action. Council, any comments or questions on this item? If not, Chair will take a motion. Move to approve. Please cast your vote. Ordinance introduction only. There is no public comment for these items and no action will be taken by the council at this meeting. If you wish to speak on any of these items, please attend the meeting where the final action will be determined and submit a blue card to the clerk. Ordinance number 2697, an ordinance of the City Council of North Las Vegas, Nevada to amend Chapter 13.04.020 of the North Las Vegas Municipal Code to incorporate changes in the utility bill format and billing as recommended by the Utility Advisory Board and providing for other matters properly related thereto, set final action for January 7, 2015. Appointments, item 30. Appointment by Mayor Lee of, city, uh, of a city member to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board. This was tabled December 3, 2014 for possible action. Great, Council, I've uh, found a wonderful person who um, would love to work with the Arts and Culture Board Advisory Board, and actually, I've had a, a great opportunity to meet some very creative people, Councilman Barone, that are very interested in this also. But I would like to make a motion to nominate Ms. Judith Pinkerton. I think you'll find her to be a very worthy person to sit on this board. And actually, Mayor, uh, I met her, and she is a creative person, and uh, I I can't wait to to find her input. And that will be my motion. Please cast your vote. Item number 31, appointment by Mayor Pro Tem Wood of a citizen member to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board, tabled December 3rd, 2014, for possible action. Well, I am still looking for someone. So since we are now on YouTube and all this stuff, if there's somebody out there who's interested, please contact me. So if we can continue this to the January 7th uh, meeting, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a good announcement. Item 32. Before we pr proceed, could we take a vote oh. on, on the continuance, please? Yes. Uh, we'll, I'll take a motion to to move your... Continue to the January 7th. January 27th meeting. You'll be prepared. Please cast your vote. The next item, appointment by Councilwoman Goins Brown of a citizen member to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board, tabled December 3rd, 2014, for possible action. I would like to appoint Gwen Walker. Um, might I also add that Ms. Walker, uh, she's been a part of this, uh, the formation and, uh, and discussion all along. So a very good appointment, I think. 
All right, thank you, Councilman Brown. We will. We have a, no, a motion. Um, please cast your vote. Item passed. Item number 33, appointment by Councilman Wagner of a citizen member to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board, table December 3rd, 2014, for possible action. I, like Councilman Wood, need uh, to continue till the next meeting since Justin Roberts wouldn't accept the appointment. Um, <laughs> so um, we'll just go to the next one, please. So that motion will be to go to the January 7th yes. meeting. Thank you very much. Please cast your vote. Item number 34, appointment by Councilman Barone of a citizen member to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board, table December 3rd, 2014, for possible action. Ms. Councilman Barone, do you have a nomination? Yeah, it's my pleasure um, that uh, uh, working with uh, Councilwoman uh, 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 Gwen Brown, uh, I met a wonderful young woman. She, uh, I think, is going to take a very wide um, set of interests, uh, I think, to have the right people we have on, uh, that we want. In this case, uh, I'd like to nominate a dancer. She actually uh, uh, is a, a teacher, and she runs the um, help me uh, the Trinity Academy there. Uh, she lives in my ward, and so I'm very happy to uh, uh, nominate Miss Monica Armstrong. Thank you very much, Council. We have a motion. Please cast your vote. Item passes. Item number 35: appointment of two at-large citizen members to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board table December 3rd 2014 for possible action councilman Barone um, a lot of these <clears throat> at large things I'm able to to work with people and uh, but in this particular case I've actually asked you to to help continue to fill those re seats in the board I tell you what, I, I know I have one person in mind for this right uh, he is uh, one of our non citizen uh, non uh, residents right however he uh, is one of the directors uh, for the National Hispanic uh, Museum. Um, he's actually nationally recognized for his expertise when it comes to, to history and, uh, and of course, uh, in, uh, when it comes to Hispanic matters, uh, he's one of the local authorities. Uh, his name is Mr. Carlos Eceta, and so uh, I'd like to uh, uh, present to him um, for your kind consideration. And I think the second person uh, well, since we already have uh, two uh, of our of, of our uh, colleagues who are asking for a little more time, I can't see why, why we can't uh, consider uh, that second appointment also on January 7th. Great. That will be the motion. Please cast your vote. <coughs> City Manager's Report. Mayor and the Council, we only have one item on the city. Excuse me one moment. I'm so sorry. No, no. Okay. We just got the vote to come up. Thank you. Oh. One item on the, uh, on, on the city manager's report, uh, that is uh, to provide update on Southern Nevada High Occupancy Vehicle Plan by Jeff Nuru, the project manager of Nevada DOT. Welcome, Jeff. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeff LaRoot. I'm a project manager for the Department of Transportation. And tonight I'd like to give you a status of the Southern Nevada HOV plan update and receive any comments or questions that you might have at the end. So tonight I'll give you a, a brief background of the original HOV plan, uh, discuss the purpose of the update, share the update's proposed recommendations for the HOV system, and then share the next steps. So the HOV plan was originally um, established in 2007, and the reason for the or the reason for the plan originally is that when the regional transportation plan was at full build out, we were still going to recognize a lot of congestion on the um, local area freeways. So we looked at other other modes of uh, handling of the traffic, and HOV lanes were one of the ideas that we came up with. Um, So the current system out that we see out there today on US 95 is uh, the way it currently operates, excuse me. We have two, we require two plus occupants in each vehicle. Motorcycles and emergency vehicles 
are allowed in the lanes. Uh, trucks with more than two axles are not. They're currently operated at the uh, peak period during during the weekday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from 2 p.m. till 7 p.m. and there's continuous access. On I-15 itself we have express lanes and they operate a little bit differently where trucks are included, all vehicles are allowed in the lanes. They're operated 24 hours a day with limited access. So the reason for the update, the 2030 Regional Transportation Plan is now a 2035 plan that has a mode choice element in it. The mode choice element gives us a, be a much better idea of the HOV um, volumes that we're going to see out on the system. So that was one of the reasons for the update. Additionally, Project NEON is coming on board, so we wanted to identify their near the near-term system priorities in that area, um, near-term being um, before 2025. Another point is we wanted to look at the long the, the whole system from Sahara down to Blue Diamond on I-15, update the overall HOV plan including direct access points, and then conduct some public outreach and workshops. So this is what the near-term um, results are from our studies thus far. As you can see out in the west, northwest we have uh, one lane in each direction on US 95 coming down to the rainbow curve east on 95 over to the spaghetti bowl and then south on I-15 down to about um, St. Rose Parkway. Actually that shows Silverado Ranch right there. One of the important things I'd like to point out in this is at the spaghetti bowl we're going to have a, a direct connection from the median lane on US 95 to the median lane on I-15. So once that's in place and we get all the other um, system built, we'll have 22 miles of continuous HOV lanes. This picture right here depicts the long-term solution for the HOV system. Again, starting in the northwest on US 95, we have one lane in each direction coming down into the rainbow curve, where we pick up another lane over to the I-15 uh, 95 spaghetti bowl. Continuing to the east and the south on 515, we have one lane in each direction down towards, um, towards Henderson. On I-15 itself, we have two lanes beginning just north of the Spaghetti Bowl, <clears throat> excuse me, going southbound on I-15 to the um, 215 I-15 Spaghetti Bowl, and then one lane in each direction going south down to St. Rose Parkway. On I-215 itself, starting to the west at Summerlin, we have one lane in each direction that continues all the way down through the I-15 to the east over to the 515. Well, boy, it would sure be nice if that, that one along I-15 to the north went kind of through North Las Vegas and a little farther. Oh, you know, in fact, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay. Too. So these are the proposed HOV system um, operational recommendations that we've got. Um, again, we're, gonna have, we're, gonna, we're recommending two-plus occupants in the vehicles. Um, the hours of operation we're changing, or we're proposing to change to a 24-hour operation seven days a week. Um, trucks still will not be allowed in the lanes. Um, motorcycles, transit, um, deadheading buses will still be allowed in the lanes. One thing I like to point out is the low emission vehicles. We're still um, looking into that. We don't know if we're going to have enough capacity, leftover capacity in the lanes to allow those vehicles yet, so we're still studying that. And then the access will be limited access, kind of like you see on I-15 with the express lanes. So this is, this is how we're converting the express lanes to HOV lanes. Currently, the express lanes have two lanes in each direction on I-15 and three general purpose lanes. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of the express lanes, convert it to an HOV lane, and then the other express lane will be a, a general purpose lane for all vehicles. This is our next step. So the initial modeling and analysis is complete. Now we're reaching out to you folks, agencies, stakeholders, and uh, soliciting uh, public feedback. And eventually in, in early next year, we're going to have stakeholder workshops where we're going to build consensus on final operational recommendations for the HOV lanes. So with that, if you have any questions, uh, I, I guess my slide was omitted for the uh, north of the Spaghetti Bowl there. What happened is when we were doing the analysis, we had two, well, we have a couple of triggers that need to be met. One is congestion, and the other one is a high number of HOV like candidates or, or vehicles. We just built the I-15 North design build and we have great capacity out there. Um, additionally, a lot of it, a lot of that traffic out there right now is truck traffic. And so we just aren't seeing the warrants to trigger an HOV lane out there. And now that's only up to the 2035 model. After 2035, 
we might we might realize that we need HOV lanes out there. So we're not saying that they're never going to happen. It's just they don't meet the criteria up to 2035, according to our study. Okay, so what you're saying is after 2035, if uh, traffic congestion increases in that area, then it subsequently could. It is, it's very possible, yes. Okay. Thanks. Or in upcoming updates. Council Woman. I have a question on your your street your lanes. I feel so guilty crossing over that solid white line. You don't have brakes every couple of miles like some cities do. Is there a reason for that? You're talking about on US 95 itself and on 15. Okay, it's just so, a solid white line. Yeah, so on US 95, the solid white line. Um, right now, we allow you to cross that line on US 95 in the HOV lanes, mm -hmm. and ultimately. What we're proposing in the the final configuration is there's going to be a double solid white line kind of like the express lanes and you are not allowed to cross over that by law but like the express lanes we have brakes every mile two miles that you can come in and out mm -hmm. and and so that'll be the plan moving forward on that so on the hov lanes if you have two people in your car you can cross that single white line on us 95 right now on i-15 you can have one person in your car or you can be, just be in your car but you're only supposed to go over that double solid uh, white line where there's where there's brakes and signage that tells you that you can. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Probably probably need a picture of that. Council yeah. Wagner. <laughs> oh. it, do you get cited for not for crossing over it? Right. In now? theory, yes. In theory. In theory, yes. Because Barone does it all the time. Yeah, we we've, we've got our eye on him. <laughs> I was just chasing after uh, uh, Dr. Wagner. That's all. <laughs> Are we going to see in the future, Jeff, and I don't want you to tip your hand or not, but where there's cameras on that and we're going to start charging people and people get a little thing in their window and we're all a long taxpayer ways. money yeah. was now set aside for the wealthier to be able to use that lane rather than all the residents who built it? The, yeah, the, um, yeah, the Lexus lane. No, uh, right now we don't have legislation in place for anything like that, so we're a long way from, from actually getting there. Um, who knows in the future? I'll you know it's a possibility but right now it's not it's not um, planned yeah it was a good answer Jeff thank you very uh, much mayor uh, I just have one question um, I, I noticed that in, uh, in California and I, I'm, I don't necessarily think we should do everything that California does but I do notice that in California they, they, they have like a, uh, a truck lane right and uh, to put people inside uh, is there has there been any thought to maybe putting a truck lane because I'll tell you what, when I'm driving south on, on I-15, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say, but I, I, I hate getting stuck behind the, the, uh, the, the rather large vehicles that, you know, I mean, they're on the inside lane, and I'm trying to pass, and I'm like, you know, uh, uh, I can't drive 55, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm still a uh, rock and roll from the 80s. I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Van Halen is still pretty big with me, and, you know, and, uh, all those guys. But anyhow, uh, please. Um, well, we, we looked at trucks in this study, but not in the way that you're talking, not for a truck lane per se. What we looked at is with the express lanes right now, there's a lot of trucks that use the express lanes. And when, that go, when the express lanes go away on I-15 and it's an HOV lane, trucks won't be allowed in that lane. So now they're going to go over into the general purpose lanes. One of the nice things, though, is um, if you can see right here, you know, we have two, two express lanes and three general purpose lanes. What's going to happen is we're going to have the HOV lane that trucks aren't allowed in, but we'll have four lanes to, to add additional capacity to I-15 itself. So the trucks will be dispersed. In fact, I was driving next to a truck tonight that was kind of in the middle, and it was, it was really, you know, really nerve-wracking. But um, the idea is that we're, we're going to have more capacity for the general purpose vehicles, so it won't be as congested feeling out there. You know, I might make um, just an, a note that Councilman Brown drives an older vehicle. It's called a Rolls Canardly. Rolls down the hill can hardly go up the next hill. <laughs> so I'm not so sure he can even do 55 <laughs> in that truck. So anyway, Council, do we have any other things? You Mayor, want my to truck has less miles than yours. I've thrown better trucks than yours away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Jeff, for bringing the levity to the meeting. All right, thank you. <laughs> Council ladies, comments first. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I, I want to put Councilman Barone on the spot because he he has done a, a really amazing thing, um, and he has gone out of his way to uh, get gifts for 
the children in North Las Vegas at the Boys and Girls Club, and I'm hoping that he will tell us about his efforts because I think what he did was really awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Actually, you know, um, what happened was that last year I tried uh, throwing a benefit concert and it didn't quite go the way I thought it was going to go. But uh, we're able to get, you know, a thousand dollars for the toys with uh, with one of our good friends uh, from the community, uh, Landhold Associates, there with uh, Mr. Dave Brown. And so this year, uh, I decided that uh, we're going to go have another crack at it. And we had actually several uh, of our uh, friends from the community. Again, Dave Brown helped us out again. And um, I'd like to go ahead and go through the entire uh, 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 all of them. But uh, if I had five friends from the community who they all pitched in uh, various amounts. And we purchased um, enough toys, well, $2,500 worth of toys. And um, we'll also be getting a donation uh, to one of the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Boys and Girls Club uh, on the end of um, Donna Street there. That's a, that's a little neighborhood one, uh, in which uh, case uh, it was expressed to me by the director there that although um, uh, it's well attended now, the children have to pay $5 a month, I think, to, to, to help you know, as a contribution to participate. And many of the children, of course, uh, their families, for them, $5 a month is a big deal. So uh, we had one of our good friends from uh, Dottie's um, uh, contribute $500 uh, to help that. And uh, yesterday, we had our, 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 the very first uh, of the, the parties, you can say. The children there, we had like, uh, like 80 children um, receive gifts. We had a milk and uh, cookies uh, with Santa Claus event. And um, it was really you know, uh, myself, uh, the mayor, uh, and Councilwoman Goins Brown were actually from this neighborhood. We actually went to the schools that the children uh, that attend this uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, that they go to, Quentin McCall, Jim Bridger, uh, Rancho High School. And so uh, it's a no brainer to, um, and what I told them, and it's a, uh, we're really happy that we have friends from the community. And uh, in this time, um, when everyone's receiving presents, uh, I tried to impose upon these children that. The, the biggest gift we have is to give to others. And so, and uh, the, the proof that, you know, uh, just to, uh, I know, uh, a couple of boys here from the community can go ahead and uh, become the mayor and, and a councilman, a, a teacher, um, they should not be stopped by anything. They can achieve whatever dream uh, they, they have in their hearts. And uh, I think the children were very impressed, you know. They don't know what a councilman is, but they certainly, they certainly were impressed when the mayor came in, right? They know what the mayor is. And um, I'd like to uh, also invite uh, anybody uh, who is here. We're going to have a second um, party, I guess you could say, at the James um, Boys and Girls Club here on Cary, uh, right next to, the, um, to, the, uh, to our fire station. And um, there the challenge is a little bigger. They have 170 children, but I think we have uh, a little bit more than enough toys uh, to, to, to help them out. And it's just one of the little things I think that we can do as um, uh, members of the community, as a le uh, leaders in the community. Um, uh, to help give so these children hopefully they'll understand uh, the true meaning of, uh, uh, of Christmas you know and, and this time that Christmas you know of course is horribly over commercialized but um, I, I hope the spirit of giving uh, is imparted upon them I, I, I thank your indulgence you know for letting me uh, for allowing me uh, such a long-winded thing um, but th again thank you very much Mayor Pro Tem and Mayor and, and the rest of my colleagues well I'd also like to thank the mayor and, and Ryan Juden, um, I, I will own up publicly, Ryan, just for you. Uh, I, I began to wonder if Thule Springs would ever become a national monument. And when they announced that it wasn't going to happen until the lame duck session, I was really afraid that we had lost whatever clout we had and it might not happen. And uh, I was really getting very disappointed for the members of the protectors of Thule Springs who have fought for eight years to see Thule Springs become a national monument and for its artifacts to be recognized and saved and preserved. Uh, but I was a doubting Thomas, and I am so pleased to say that with the efforts of Mayor Lee and Ryan Juden uh, and the work they did with um, Congressman Bishop, uh, that that did get passed by both the Congress uh, and the Senate. And uh, so we now have ourselves a national monument. Brian, has it, has it actually been signed by the president yet? Do you know? I don't know either, but it is forthcoming. Um, so we are really, really excited. And what that means to this city um, 
for a brand new type of, of scientific tourism, uh, what it could mean for the scientific community. I understand our fossils go back farther than what they have in the La Brea tar pits. They actually believe they may figure out what happened to the dinosaurs mm. based on our fossils. So, I mean, that's how sig scientifically significant um, the establishment of the monument is and what it means for us in a new kind of tourism and economic development. 2,000 acres for UNLV to possibly come out uh, and build a new campus, an even bigger campus out here in North Las Vegas. Uh, they can have a world-renowned archaeological, paleontological program. And if they're smart, they are just kitty corner from the VA hospital. They could have a great medical school and intern <laughs> over at the VA hospital. So the economic development potential, and I think what there's 200 acres for CSN also to do, an, uh, to do another campus. There's 150 acres for the city of North Las Vegas and another couple hundred uh, acres for the city of Las Vegas for economic development purposes. Um, so this just is tremendously valuable for, um, for the city, for the city of Las Vegas, for all of Southern Nevada, uh, and really uh, for the United States. So really I want to thank you, Mayor and, and Ryan, for all your efforts because yeah. It's taken eight long years, but you got us across the finish line. Thank you very much. I miss it's actually, and and I don't expect you to notice. I'm intimate with the bill. It's actually 600 acres for Las Vegas and North Las Vegas. We both got about that. But that 150 acres you testified to about being across from the VA hospital would be a terrific place for a medical school to sit and a butt to the VA hospital. I think future city councils and mayors are going to have a, a great ability to change the fortunes of this community based upon the work of this council. So thank you very much. Um, I have one. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'd also like to put you on the spot, Mayor Lee. Um, last week, Friday, Santa Claus played a visit to Lomi Heard Elementary School, which is the school I'm the assistant principal at on Lomi Heard, um, Nellis Air Force Base. Um, so Bob Ellis of Snap Towing adopted Lomi Heard two years ago because he did not realize that there was a school on a military installation. It's a Clark County school, not a DOD school. And he figured that since these are children of, of, of people that you know fight for our country every day, that he wanted to do something for them. So every, the, every year he outfits every single student on our campus with a new pair of shoes. And last week they brought toys to the kids and played Santa Claus. And so Mayor Lee, with all of his friends with lots of money, um, so I'd just like to present you with this thank you letter that says on behalf of the students, faculty, and staff at Lonely G. Heard Elementary School, we would like to extend a heartfelt thank you for your generation, generous donation to our school. They raised over $10,000, and that will go to fund the license for what's called an accelerated reader program. It's a computer-based program that makes sure students are comprehending what they read based on their reading level so they can select books that they like to read. So we just like to extend a heartfelt thank you on behalf of myself and my principal, Mrs. Corey Deal. Thank you. I always look forward to going out there and to see the excitement that you have for the students. Well, uh, we are, oh, um, almost. Councilman? Just real fast. Um, you know, I, I think I'm going to wind up having to give uh, Mr. Bobby Ellis some sort of special award. Um, I, I guess the city staff is probably not aware of it, but it, he came out last week to Rancho High School and gave a donation to uh, the, uh, our homeless program of $5,000. He also contributed $1,000 to the toys that I purchased uh, for, uh, for, for the kids here at uh, uh, the Boys and Girls Club. And, of course, I'm re I would re be remiss... Uh, and uh, pointing out that he is uh, a fellow alumni of Rancho High School here in the, the original high school in, uh, in North Las Vegas. Um, most definitely very proud of, the, uh, uh, of that fellow. Um, also, I'd like to just uh, point out in the next year, um, we, I, I, I thank you very much for uh, getting the, uh, the Arts and Cultural Board uh, off the ground. Um, we have some exciting events uh, planned already uh, for, for the next year. Uh, and uh, we're taking submissions for uh, artwork uh, to be displayed uh, next month uh, f uh, in, on January 16th for our, our first uh, winter art show. And I think uh, Gwen and uh, Councilwoman Gwen Brown are, are, are working together to, to put them together for uh, African American Heritage Month in, in, in February. So I, I just, I'm, 
I'm really like my my dog my my doggy tail is wagging right now. I'm really excited for uh, the new year and our arts program. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. This is a very busy city council. Thank you for all the efforts you put in the community. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on council items? Seeing none, we will open this up now. The time that's been set aside for public comment. Uh, when I call your name, please come forward to podium. State your name and address for the record. And we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Um, Gary, would you come up first? And Doris, if you would follow him, that would be great. Welcome, Ms. Richard. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, it's really exciting to hear all this stuff about uh, Tule Springs. I think we have some great things happening in this community. I think we also have a lot of problems. I'm not going to talk about those problems tonight because it's Christmas. Christmas is a special time for everybody. Did you know that even atheists like Christmas? It's a wonderful time of the year. Uh, I brought the Book of Mormon with me. I brought this Bible, which is basically a combination of two religions. The first part of it is the uh, Jewish religion, and the second part is a Christian religion. I guess it's kind of one of those deals where you buy one book, you get two for the price of one. And I'd like to make a comment, and believe me, I, I'm like Thomas Jefferson said we need to build a wall between government and religion. And he was right, and I, I'm a firm believer in that. But it doesn't mean the government can't learn from these books. Keep in mind, the very first law was Jewish law. The first four book of, books of the Bible were, was the books of Moses, and Leviticus was the book of the laws. And one of the laws stated that when you were a landowner, when you harvested your, your, your harvest, you didn't harvest all of it. You left the edges unharvested for the poor and for strangers. So this to me tells me that part of the responsibility of all government is to make sure that we take care of everybody from the bottom up. And I do, I'm do. i not optimistic uh, about what's going to happen in the next few years. First of all, we, we're going to have an all-Republican House and all-Republican Senate, so I doubt if we'll see a raise in the minimum wage, which we drastically need. Uh, as we move to the New Testament, Jesus was born poor. He stayed poor his entire life. He was close to the hungry. He was close to the people at the very bottom of society. The historical Jesus was the same way. He was very concerned about the role of government overtaxing and not dispersing wealth in a proper manner. Uh, this is your book. You're more familiar with it than I am. Oh, I'm done at 29 seconds. Uh, since you're more familiar with this, would you like to read verse 20 and 21, Moroni? Actually, this is a portion of the meeting for you, Gary. So if you want to well, read I got to put my glasses on. I don't have this part memorized, but it's it's. Um, you're familiar with this scripture, right? A few scriptures. I'm not sure of that one exactly. Well, this one speaks volumes. It says, "Wherever there must be faith, and if there must be faith, there must also be hope, and if there is be hope, there must also be charity. And except ye have charity, ye can." in no wise be saved in the kingdom of God, neither can ye be saved in the kingdom of God if ye have not faith, and neither can ye have faith with no hope. I believe this talks about caring about everyone. Um, my three minutes are up. I'd like to wish all of you a very ha happy holiday. Hope you keep these things in mind. Uh, one thing in closing, uh, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, uh, I would hate to think where we would be uh, now, because I know this is your second Christmas here. Uh, I think you have gone beyond uh, measure, done more for this city in the last year and a half than anybody has done while I've been in this town. So I'm 
very thankful that we have a mayor who actually cares about this city because I think we went for a long time without one. So I'm thankful to have you up there. Well, I appreciate that. I want the record to reflect that. I let you speak longer than three minutes because I didn't want to yeah. be strict by God. You know what I mean? No, you don't want to. <laughs> You're right in the middle of verse, Gary. I said, no, Once again. I'm not getting in that one. <laughs> Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Carter. Good evening, Council. My name is Doris Carter, 1626 Davis Place. And I'd like to start off by saying my feelings were hurt last Wednesday when we did the tree lighting. Everyone on Council did eye contact, shook my hands, even got a kiss, uh, but one. And this person almost walked over me to say something to someone else. And I don't think that I would do something like that. And I'm sorry, but I'm speaking about uh, Councilman Wagner. I've only sh sorry, shaken Doris, his hand. I never saw you. Okay. I never saw you. I would I never I, walk by you without giving you a kiss on the that. forehead. Matter of fact, as soon as it's done, I'm going to come and give you a big old kiss on the forehead. <laughs> okay. And then I got another problem. This uh, tree lighting was supposed to have been... Uh, live. I actually stayed up till 11 o'clock to watch Channel 3 News to see this event. And what we got was three to five seconds, not minutes. To me, that was detrimental to what we were trying to express during that time. We had Santa Claus, we had the whole council there. And the parents of the kids that actually did the program, if they hadn't been there with their cameras and whatnot, there would have been a lot of things that were not admitted to see. Because with me looking at that TV, what I saw was the back of the mayor, you know, since the tree was lit. I saw the, not the, not the half, but the third of the choir that was close to where you were and I forgot I don't know the name of the person that was supposed to have been doing the the live session but basically what I saw was his face and I thought it should have been the council it should have been the choir and it should have been the audience that was there because this is what it was supposed to have been all about and I've actually spoken to our communications person and he tells me that he only has one person on his committee. And I told him he needs somebody else because uh, he does a fantastic job of communicating what we're all about. And we need him to get another person to do the MCN for our events and whatnot and let him take the pictures because he does a fantastic job. So uh, with that said, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Look forward to working with you, along with you, and giving out more suggestions and whatnot so we can get to the point of being a city that actually works. Thank you. Ms. Carter, I would like to say one thing uh, that Mitch Fox, you recognize him as, that's his name, Mitch Fox. At 6 p.m., though, they had a big spread. From what I understood, Kevin Janison did the whole news, I mean, the, the weather. And uh, at the 11 o'clock, you're right, they just they just clipped it real quick. But yes. by the time we got home, we missed the really big part of the TV time that was actually spent here. And so um, I appreciate Mitch doing everything he could. Maybe he can let them know at 11 o'clock just to take a couple more seconds. That would be fine. I'm sure he would do that for us. Okay. Uh, one more thing I almost forgot. Was that supposed to be free time for us? Uh uh, do we have to pay for that in some way? We asked him to come out, and we did the countdown. Mm -hmm. And when he came on the air and all the kids were there, Santa was there, that was live. Mm -hmm. So we did get a, a period of time we got a lot of coverage. And then the what latter channel, time. What channel was that? Huh? What channel was that you got that all this live coverage? 
one more time? What channel? Channel, channel three. Channel, and actually, Mitch is back there, and he can meet with you, and maybe we can make a copy before we can get it to you. Would that be fine? Okay. Because I did we... recognize you and your daughter and maybe no, your grand. No, not my, not, no, oh. no, 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 that's wrong. A friend and neighbor and her grandchild. That's what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, just let the record reflect that I don't owe you a kiss, but I'll give you one. <laughs> Thank that, you very that, much. I, I appreciate the acknowledgement. I don't need all the kisses and all that other stuff. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Doris. Christmas. Thank you. And to all the people and the staff here still, thank you so much for hanging with us this evening. We're adjourned. Thank you.